Hello YouTubers, this is Triple Seven Die Hard Forever coming at you with another highly anticipated and highly recommended model. Today I'll be doing a review on a JC Wings Lathanza Boeing 747-400 in the Star Alliance livery, which is the one you see there on the right. This is the second of three Boeing 747 that's sporting the uh, Star Alliance livery that JC Wings has released. The one on the left tie, that's the last one I gotta do. I'll do that at a later date. I purchased this model from Troy's Toys, whose store is based out of Olin Park, Kansas, and his website is www.troystoysinc.com. But first, allow me to share some information about the history of Lufthansa. Here's some information you need to know about this prestigious airline, if you would please. Lufthansa actually traces its history beginning back to 1926, when Doha Lufthansa AG was formed in Berlin, Germany, DLH, as it was known for short was actually Germany's major flag carrier until 1945 when all services were suspended following the defeat of Germany in World War II. Then fast forward to January 6, 1953, in an effort to create a new national airline, a company called Lufttag was founded in Cologne, Germany. Then on August 6, 1954, Lufttag acquired the name and the logo of the liquidated Deutsche Lufthansa for 30,000 Deutschmarks thus continuing the tradition of a German flag carrier of that name which is mostly recognized today as Lufthansa as the airline commenced operations shortly thereafter on April 1st, 1955. The name of the company Lufthansa is derived from the word Luft which is the German word for air and Hansa which is the Latin term meaning guild which is most commonly used historically in reference to the Hanseatic League. The headquarters of Lufthansa is located in Deus an inner city sectional part of Cologne, Germany, while the carrier's main hub and base of operations is located on the grounds of Frankfurt Airport, which is located approximately seven and a half miles southwest of central Frankfurt. And Lufthansa also has a secondary hub located at Munich Airport, which is located approximately 17.7 miles northeast of Munich, Germany. Lufthansa is currently the largest airline in Europe based in terms of passengers carried and fleet size as it operates services to 220 destinations in 81 countries across Africa, North America, South America, Asia, and Europe with the operating fleet of 272 aircraft which includes 32 Boeing 747s and which 13 of those are the Boeing 747-400s and 19 are the Boeing 747-8 Intercontinentals with no unfulfilled orders pending at the time of this video review post. Lufthansa reached a milestone in aviation on December 4, 2017, as Lufthansa became the first European airline to receive this prestigious honor of officially becoming a certified five-star airline carrier, according to the international airline review firm Skytrax Magazine, as Lufthansa also became the 10th airline in the world to hold this prestigious honor, along with ANA All Nippon Airways, based out of Tokyo, Japan, Asiana Airlines, based out of Seoul, South Korea, Cathay Pacific, based out of Hong Kong, Etihad Airways, based out of Abu Dhabi, Eva Air, based out of Taipei, Taiwan, Garuda, Indonesia, based out of Jakarta, Indonesia, Hainan Airlines, based out of Hainan, China, Qatar Airways, based out of Doha, Qatar, and Singapore Airlines, based out of Singapore. And the Boeing customer code for Lufthansa on this particular aircraft is 30. Now let's take a look at the front of the box. You, you see the Star Alliance title, the slogan, The Way the Earth Connects, the Star Alliance logo. You also see the Star Alliance logo in the background. You look real closely behind the, uh, the tie, the United and the Lufthansa titles there. And you see a picture of the uh, Earth you know, uh, coming up over the sun. And you see the aircraft type. The 1200 scale diecast aircraft model implements the lower part of the box. You also see the three airlines there in the middle of the box. Now you're looking at the back of the box, nothing much back there except the Boeing licensing product decal here on the left side of the lower part, the warning information. You see the JC Wings logo as well as their Facebook social media page information at the lower part of the box. Now you're looking at the top of the box where you see the aircraft type, the 1200 scale diecast aircraft model information, the Star Alliance title, the slogan, the Star Alliance logo, and the three airlines, Thai Airways International, United, and Lufthansa. Alright, now you're looking at the bottom of the box, the same information you saw at the top of the box. You see the, uh, the three different airlines, but you see the one check, Lufthansa, that's the one I'm going to do the review on. Alright? 
All right, now you're looking at the model stand that came with the model. You see the nice little plaque right there, the Star Lines title, the Lothanza title, the aircraft type, and the scale model information on this plaque. And then you see the nice little black pattern there. And then the purpose of that black pattern is to prevent your model from being damaged or scratched when you put your model on the stand. That's the purpose of that black pattern. Now you're looking at this plastic bag and what's in this plastic bag are the gear replacement doors plus two little toothpicks for the gear replacement doors. Please stay tuned as I go into details for the purpose of these gear replacement doors on this particular model, okay? All right, with all that information out of the way about the history of Lufthansa, all the details you see on that box that the model came in, the nice little customized model stand that came with the model, as well as the little package there that features the uh, gear replacement door for us to two little toothpicks. With no further ado, everyone, here is the model. Check it out. There it is, everyone, the JC Wings Lathonza Boeing 747-400 sporting the Star Alliance livery in a 1200 scale model. Now, let me give you some information about the Star Alliance billboard livery you see on this aircraft here. Like Sky Team Alliance and the One World Alliance. The Star Alliance livery is also known as a flying billboard to promote their air alliance to other airlines around the world to join and expand their global network. For example, some of the Star Alliance members, such as Lathonza, has painted some of their aircraft in this delivery scheme with Asiana Airlines being the first Star Alliance member to paint their aircraft in the current Star Alliance delivery scheme which was unveiled in March 2003. So with all that being said, let's get down to business and let me show you all the details on this aircraft model, shall we? Let's roll. Alright, we're going to start on the uh, front side of the aircraft on the uh, port slash left side. We're going to start at the bottom here. You see the nose gears right here. The nose gear struts featuring the nose gear lights. The nose gear door featuring the partial registration ship number on there, TH. As well as the Peter tubes and the static ports, what have you. The nose cone. The windshield wipers and the cockpit windows. I'm going to give you a better visual view of those later on in the review. And then you see this logo right here above the windows and right below the cockpit window right there. This logo was designed by the late German architect and graphic designer Otto Furley in 1918. It symbolizes an enriched stylized crane in flight. The emblem was adopted by Deutsche Lufthansa in 1926 and has been the airline's official logo ever since. And then you see the Star Lines logo right there by the uh, cockpit window you see there. The Lufthansa joined the Star Lines along with Air Canada. SAS Scandinavian Airlines System, United and Thai Airways International, as one of the five founding members on May 14, 1997, which consists of 29 airline members from five inhabited continents. And then you see the Lufthansa title right there at the uh, lower part of the aircraft. And then you see the Star Alliance billboard tiles right here across the aircraft you see there. Impressive. Now you're looking at the edge of the wing and what you see there are the inboard landing lights on the edge of the wing there. Very realistic and detailed as you can see. Okay, we're still on the port side and in between the engines you see here. You got a better visual view of the landing bogey gears there on the port side including the landing gear doors. I'll show you another angle here. But what you're looking at there, the two big massive engines you see there. These are the General Electric CF6-80C2B1F engines that were used on this particular Lufthansa Boeing 747-400 aircraft. You also see the engine cones there, very detailed and realistic. Now I'm going to turn this aircraft model around let you see the uh, front angle of these engines and the turbo fan blades do spin. Check it out. Now you're looking at the front angle of these engines here on the port side and the turbo fan blades do spin. Check it out as well as right here as well okay it's good enough all right and then you come over here you got a better visual view of the uh, inboard landing lights as well as the landing bogey gears here on the support side the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear door there as well now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the starboard sort no uh, engine strikes but the turbo fan blades do spin Same over here. And you got a better visual view of the uh, inboard landing uh, lights here on the starboard side, 
as well as the, the landing bogey gears here on the starboard side, the struts, as well as the landing gear doors there as well. All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft where you got a better visual view of the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, the nose cone, the nose gear doors, as well as the nose gear lights, and the nose gears and the nose gear struts there as well. So with all that being said, I'm going to take it back to the port side because there's more information to share with you there as well. Let's roll. Now you're looking at the white winglet here on the port side, painted in white, along with the red navigation light next to that winglet. If you didn't know, that winglet is six feet tall. Now we're at the back of the aircraft here on the port side and right uh, inside the Star Alliance tires you see there. You see a, a cargo, an upper cargo container door. Wow, this could be a combi aircraft. Oh, okay, I didn't know there. But did you see the, uh, the upper cargo container door right there? All right, now you're looking at the back of the aircraft here on the port side where you see the Boeing 747-400 decal you see there. If you didn't know, Lufthansa became the fifth carrier after Northwest Airlines, Singapore Airlines, KLM Royal Dutch Airlines, and Cathay Pacific respectively to acquire this prestigious state-of-the-art aircraft into their fleet when it took delivery of their first Boeing 747-400 aircraft, which bears the registration ship number D-ABTD on April 27, 1989, and took delivery of its last Boeing 747-400 aircraft, which bears the registration ship number D-ABTL on March 15, 2002. Lufthansa at one time registered and operated as many as 31 of these iconic jetliners in their fleet. Now as of January 2018 or at the time of this video review posting, there are only 13 Boeing 747-400s that remain operating in their fleet as this aircraft will be phased out completely from Lufthansa's fleet by 2025 and eventually be replaced with the forthcoming next generation Boeing 777-9X which is scheduled to enter Lufthansa's fleet sometime in 2025. We still at the back of the aircraft on the port side and below the seven foot Boeing 747-400 decal. You see the uh, name of the aircraft, Dosberg. Now what is Dosberg? If you didn't know, Lufthansa named most of the aircraft after, after certain cities throughout Germany. And Dosberg, this still industrial town is also home to the world's biggest inland port that's located approximately 14 miles north of Dusseldorf in North Rhine, Westphalia, Germany. Now you're looking at the registration ship number underneath the windows there by the uh, L5 door. Registration ship number D-ABTH. Reg registration ship number D-ABTH. This was Lufthansa's 14th Boeing 747-400 jetline to enter the airline's fleet. And the first test flight on this aircraft took place on May 15, 1991 and was delivered to Lufthansa on June 5, 1991. This aircraft was one of 14 aircraft on Lufthansa's fleet that was actually painted in the Star Alliance livery as this aircraft sported this livery from February 2003 to November 2008. However, this aircraft was eventually withdrawn from Lufthansa's fleet on November 1, 2014 and was flown to Mojave Air and Spaceport Aircraft Storage Facility located in Mojave, California on November 18, 2014. Alright, and next to the uh, registration ship number is the German flag decal you see there. This flag decal represents the country where Lufthansa currently operates from as the national flag carrier for the country of Germany. And then you come up here, just the tail here, the little black tail here, you see the Star Alliance logo right there, as well as the partial registration ship number up there, TH. Alright, we're at the back of the aircraft here on the port side where you see the APU, auxiliary power unit exhaust right here, and there is a hole there, which is very detailed. And then you see the strobe light right there underneath the APU exhaust. Now I'm looking at the Lufthansa Boeing 747-400 in the Star Alliance livery from the rear view angle. Now I'm looking at the front of the aircraft on the starboard side where you see the nose gears, the nose gear struts, the nose gear lights, the nose gear door featuring the partial registration ship number on the nose door, TH. See the pitot tubes and the static ports, the nose cone, 
the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, the Star Alliance logo, the, Air, the Lathansa logo, the Lathansa titles, and uh, right above the Lathansa title, below the Lathansa title, you see the uh, front cargo container loading door there, as well as the inboard landing lights right there on the starboard side, as well as the Star Alliance titles across this aircraft. And in between the engines, you see the uh, landing bogey gears there on the starboard side. I'm going to show you at a different angle, as well as the landing gear doors, as well as the uh, General Electric CF 6 80C 2B1F engines on the starboard side, featuring the uh, engine cones very detailed. Now you got a better visual view of the landing bogey gears here on the uh, starboard side. The landing gear over here is kind of a little all little off the uh, runway there a little bit I don't know if anybody else had that issue but it is what it is you also see the center bogey gears here on the starboard side the struts as well as the landing gear door there as well now looking at the, um, the winglet here on the starboard side painted in white along with the green navigation light right on the edge of the winglet now looking at the back of the aircraft we see the part of the star lines uh, billboard title on the aircraft you see the rear cargo container loading door the FT bolt bin door the registration ship number the German flag decal uh, the name of the name of the aircraft as well as the historic German city the Boeing 747 4 decal as well as the Star Alliance logo that's painted on that black nice looking tail check it out there along with the partial registration ship number on top of the tail TH Okay, before I show you the area of bird's eye view of this aircraft model here, as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model here under here as well, here's one feature I'm gonna allow you to check out, which is the rolling gears. This model rolls pretty good. Yeah, it has a little rub, but anyway, it does tilt, and the nose gear swivel there as well, as you can see there. All right, with no further ado, here is the area of bird's eye view of this aircraft model. Let's check it out. Okay, now you're looking at the area of bird's eye view of this aircraft mount. At the front of the aircraft, you see the nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows, the Poscape hatch door. You see the star lines, decals on both sides of the aircraft. The anti-collision beacon light right there on that distinctive hump, along with two uh, high-frequency antennas. You come down here, you see the ADF antennas in 3D. You see the star lines titles across the aircraft tail and the horizontal stabilizer you see there there see the two little dots on the edge of the horizontal stabilizers as well as over here those are the illuminating lights to light up this tail here when it flew during nighttime now let's check out the wings no wing walkway but you got the flaps slats ailerons spoils what have you see the nice little engines there come up here see the fuel dump valve as well as the white winglet on this side let's check out this side no wing walkway, but you got the flaps, slats, aileron spoils, what have you. The nice little engines there. The fuel dump valve, as well as the winglet here on this side of the aircraft. Okay, now you're looking at the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft. Where you see the nose cone, the closed nose gear door. The open nose gear door as well as the nose gear. See another high frequency antenna. See the end collision beacon light. The hole where the stand goes in at. The center bogey gears here. I think they tilt. Yeah, they tilt. That's a little challenge with that one, but it's all good. See another couple high frequency antennas there. Pressure lead valves. And the APU housing doors. There's the horizontal stabilizers underneath. Now let's check out the gears over here. Uh, a little challenge with the tilting, but it's all right. See the flaps, slats, aileron spoils underneath here. See the engines there underneath. The fuel dump valve and the winglet here on this side. So let's check out this side. Yeah, a little tilt there, but it's all right. See the flaps, slats, ailerons underneath here engines in detail underneath here 
and then you come here the fuel dump valve as well as the winglet on this side of the aircraft as well all right since i've showed you the area of bird's eye view this aircraft model here as well as the undercarriage bell view this aircraft model in full detail now i'm going to put it on that little wooden stand that i showed you earlier so with no further ado everyone here is the model on the stand check it out okay finally got this model on the stand with no problem no hesitation you see it in a takeoff landing position here on the uh, port side with all the gears intact you see there now you're looking at the front of the aircraft in the takeoff landing position with all the gears intact with this model on the stand. See the nice little customized plaque there. Now you're looking at the model in the takeoff landing position as you see on the starboard side. Now you're looking at this model from the tail cam angle in a takeoff landing position. Perfect. Now, before I take this model to stand, I got it in this position at this angle for a reason. And the reason I'm going to take off the, no the gear, start with the nose gear up here. Hold on. Okay, I had a little challenge with the nose gear, but I got it off there. As you see there, right there, it's magnetic. Now I'm going to take the nose gears off here on the port side. There. As well as the... the uh, landing gears here on the starboard side there they magnetic now I'm going to take this off the stand and get the center gears off check it out see there they magnetic you see there and there alright now since I got this got all the gears off this model I'm going to let you see this model at a different angle without the gears check it out now you're seeing the model displayed in flight mode without the gears as you see there on the runway display board. Now you got one or two options you, how you want to display your model. If you want to display it this way, that's fine. See these gear replacements, uh, doors inside this package that I showed you earlier. That's the purpose of these gear replacements is to substitute your model while you display your model in flight mode. Or you can go to the other option, just put keep the gears on there like in a takeoff landing position. No gear down position. Gears up, gear down, don't matter. That's your choice. I choose to leave mine on there. But with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and put these gears back on this model, take some out stand, and go ahead and wrap up this model review. All right? All right. Now let's check out the seating configuration. This particular Lufthansa Boeing 747-400 Jumbo Jetliner seated 378 passengers in a three-class configurated cabin layout. Here's the breakdown. It runs from rows 81 to 84, which is the upper deck, which is from here to here. You have 16 first-class seats and rows 1 to 15, which is the main deck, which will be from here to about right here. You have 52 business class seats and rows 24 to 56, which is the main deck also, which will be from here all the way back to the rear of the aircraft. You have an additional 310 economy class seats, which brings a total of 378 seats. And finally, as of January 2018, or at the time of this video review posting, the Thonza currently employs their Boeing 747-400 Jumbo Jetliners on routes from Frankfurt to worldwide destinations such as Toronto, Vancouver, Seattle, Denver, Orlando, Washington Dulles, Berlin Tegel, Osaka Kansai, Detroit, Dubai, Rio de Janeiro, Mumbai, Beijing Capital, Shanghai Pudon, Seoul Ichiyan, and Tehran, Iran. Well everyone, this will conclude this model review. I'd like to know if you got this model review or you plan on getting this model if you can find it. I do have the other Lufthansa from in flight. I got that on deck, but I will do that one at a later date. But anyway, please take care. God bless. Stay tuned. There's more model content coming. Peace.